Hey guys, welcome to Keto Wedding Cake Part 2. We're going to be making the second layer of my trial wedding cake, plus some extras. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell icon so you don't miss a video, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today we are making my future husband's layer of his wedding cake. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the first video where I made the first layer of my trial wedding cake and see what I'm talking about. But this is going to be a lemon raspberry layer. I used my vanilla cake recipe, but I'm gonna do a couple of different tweaks to it to make it a lemon layer cake and we're doing nine inch cake pan because my first layer was a 12 inch cake. So we're doing 12 inches and then a nine inch on top of that. So I have my two pans here. I just gotta spray them and get them ready to go. First, I wanna make the buttermilk. Now, normally you would add vinegar to your milk, your nut milk of choice, and that would make your buttermilk. But because we're making a lemon cake, why not use the acid from the lemon to make buttermilk? So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of lemon juice, but I'm gonna zest two lemons into my dry ingredients. Always make sure you zest your lemons before you juice them. These are some huge lemons, so I'm definitely only gonna need one lemon for juice. But I want a lot of citrus flavor in there. Now, I'm not going to go through all my dry ingredients for you. I'm going to put them up on the screen right now for if you want to make this cake. I did not really do anything to dry ingredients for this. The only thing I'm doing is adding the lemon zest and the lemon juice. The rest is staying the same. That's why I gave you base recipes for a lot of my recipes. I give you a lot of techniques and different recipes in videos so that you can go and mix match whatever frostings you want, whatever fillings you want. You know, I do the jams, I do the ganaches, the buttercreams. All those recipes are on my blog and you can pick and choose what frostings you want to use, what fillings you want to use. You can make it all customizable to whatever you want. I did not do a trial of any of this cake, so this is all trials. I'm testing this recipe and my decorating techniques that I'm going to use on my wedding cake. I don't have a solid plan. And then testing the fillings and how much I'm going to need for all the different layers that I'm doing. Because I've never made a four layer cake with my jam or my peanut butter mousse. Well, I did last week, so you'll see that. I haven't done it yet today as I'm shooting. <laughs> Okay, so two tablespoons, which would be an ounce. A little trick, get as many seeds out as you see, because those are the ones that are right at the surface that are gonna get in there if they are. 28 grams is an ounce. I just usually squeeze above my hand, just in case. Almost got an ounce out of half of one. Lemons were huge. Oh, that's it. Save this other lemon for something else. <laughs> and then we're gonna go up to I'm not good with math, so I usually go to ounces. We need nine ounces of milk still. So a cup and a quarter total. There you go. Nine ounces plus one ounce of lemon juice to make our buttermilk. Now my milk's been sitting out for a while, but it's still a little chill, so I'm going to give it a little 30 second blast in the microwave just to warm it up. So it'll all be written in the blog post. We've got to finish our pans. melt the butter then I'm gonna get this batter made and get it split in between these two pans if you want to see a detailed video on this vanilla cake check out my video I'll link it up there for you I'm not gonna go into grave detail here because otherwise this may be hour-long video 
We got lots of stuff to get on to making besides this vanilla lemon cake. Hey, it acted kind of crazy when I put all these ingredients together, so this could be a complete fail. I don't know. It was definitely very buttermilk-like when I went and poured it in. It was curdled. So, I don't know, maybe it'll taste really good. Guess we'll see. Popping these into the oven, and we'll be back to start our filling for these guys. Just a note about that cake also. If you saw my first video, I used chocolate peanut butter protein powder. If I had, I know Keto Chow has a lemon meringue protein powder, I would totally have used that. I just didn't have that on hand. And I'm just trying to use up stuff that I have and not buy any extra. So I just used my unflavored whey protein isolate and added the lemon juice and lemon zest. So let's get on to making the filling. It's gonna be a raspberry jam, which if you haven't seen this, my thumbprint cookies, I made this exact recipe, the only thing I'm changing is I'm making more. Hopefully it'll be enough to fill three layers of my wedding cake. And I'm adding a little bit of lemon juice to the raspberries. So because I'm doing 12 ounces, I'm doing a cup of allulose. And that's 120 grams. I didn't even think about it at the time, but now we can use our other zested lemon. I'm going to weigh this. I want at least two tablespoons. Out of one lemon, I almost got three tablespoons. So I'm just going to add a tiny splash of water to this. And I'm just going to let it simmer away until it's a nice jammy consistency. Oh, <laughs> might need to lock down my butane. There we go. I'm just going to do it on like a medium heat. As medium as I can get it on this stove. Have this standing by. Okay, our cakes are done. You want them to be solid feeling in the middle. Putting a toothpick in is not gonna work. It's gonna come out clean no matter what because it's such a thick batter. So you want to just make sure it's not mushy anymore in the middle of your cake. Let those cool. And the jam will be done soon. It has to get right into the refrigerator to cool so that it'll be nice and solid to put in these cakes. This is going to be a trial on how much I need and also if I do need to add any gelatin to this cake in order to make it from not sliding. Because sometimes if your, gel if your jelly isn't set enough, your cakes, if you put too much in, your layers will slide around. So we're gonna do something to help counteract that when we get there. We'll be back once this is done to show you how to make some keto gum paste. Okay, our jam is cooling. These have been cooling for a little while. This is a trick I've always used to get cakes out. If for some reason they're not moving, then you can go in with an offset spatula. Usually this releases them from the sides if you greased it enough, which is coming out on one side, but not the other. So maybe we missed it a little bit. Yeah, we missed it a little bit, but it's okay. You can cover everything with frosting. Well, now we can try this. Mm, it's lemony. I'd want it sweeter, but I didn't up the sweetness because it's for my fiance. He doesn't like things super sweet. That's just a little note. If you like sweet things, 
I'm gonna have the sweetener in this. You can also do this, which I've done many a times in the pastry world. Make sure it's all unstuck. And there you go. We're gonna let this cool for a while. We'll get on to making some keto gum paste. Okay, so I showed you red fondant in the first video. Part two, we're making some red gum paste. And it's actually super easy. The only special ingredient is this stuff right here. It's cellulose gum. And this is what gives you the gummy texture. And unlike the fondant, this dries completely hard, which is what I'm using to make all of my roses, which I'm thinking I'm gonna need at least 40 roses for this wedding cake, and I've made one so far. So we're gonna make a batch of red gum paste today. Like all the other ones, it starts with powdered sweetener. And I am using powdered monk fruit erythritol. It starts with 120 grams. I'm hoping I'm gonna have enough for all this. 120, we're gonna need more of that. <laughs> and then to this, we're adding two egg whites. Whoa, almost lost it. We're gonna give that a mix. Down below will be this recipe and also to make black gum paste. I did not make a white gum paste. I just wanted black and red roses. And I'm gonna make, I think I'm gonna make my cake topper out of gum paste also. See how that goes. You want it nice and mixed up in there. To that, we're adding one tablespoon of the cellulose gum. It's nine grams. Mix that up. You want to get this nice and smooth. And since it's a sticky ball, I used 30 grams of beet powder. This and 30 grams more of powdered sweetener. And just mix all that together. It's got one more ingredient. I get frustrated quickly with the bowl. <laughs> okay, and you can move up your hands a little bit. And then to this, we're just adding a tablespoon of oil. And that's the only other ingredient. I just kind of pour it over, mix it up. This helps with the stickiness also, just like in the fondant. I don't know if I said it in this video, but that powdered sugar is all pre-sifted. Again, with the fondant, same with the fondant, you can add more powdered sweetener later if it's too pliable and not stiff enough. But you don't want to add it now, just in case. So I'm going to wrap this up in plastic wrap, double, put it in a Ziploc bag, and it needs to go in the refrigerator for a couple of hours just to relax and be ready to go to make roses. Okay, it is now on to filling and base frosting our second layer of my keto wedding cake. If you saw the last video, I did a whipped ganache with peanut butter. This one, I'm gonna do a buttercream frosting. I'm not gonna make it super sweet though, and I'm gonna add some lemon juice to balance the raspberry. And this is all the powdered sweetener I have left. So I'm going to use most of this, I think. 
And if I need to add more sweetness, I'll add a little bit of powdered stevia or the pure monk fruit that's like super concentrated sweetness. And yeah, get into a piping bag, cut our cake, and fill it. Okay, so that is a sweet lemon butter cream. Did two sticks of butter, about a cup of powdered monk fruit erythritol blend. I'm not sure how much monk fruit extract, I just kept adding probably over an eighth of a teaspoon of the monk fruit powder. You can also just use liquid stevia in this. And then I used pretty much a whole lemon's worth of lemon juice. And it's tart, but it's sweet, and it's not super just straight butter, which is how you make buttercream, you just add a crap ton of sugar until it doesn't really taste like butter anymore. Grab a piping bag, fill it up. Saw my last video, we're doing the same thing. We're making a border around our cake layers so that the jam doesn't spill out. This is gonna be a real thin layer too. I don't think our jam is super thick, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution and do a super thin layer. So I don't want the cake layers sliding off of each other. Again, just like in part one, I'm not fully prepared for this building of a cake. I did not have any nine inch cake rounds. I will order some for when I make my final wedding cake, but I just used some contact paper on a cardboard round that I cut out to fit these cakes. So ideally you want a pre-done one for yourself. You gotta slice both these cakes in half. So this is gonna be a four layer like hopefully the first one will be when I go to make my final cake. Ooh, I went a little too high. Yeah. Same thing as the first one. Keep your knife super level all the way through. Keep following your line. Yeah, I went a little too high on this side. And I didn't stay completely level. <laughs> We're gonna want to do this one for the bottom, I think, because we have a little cake missing. Oops. This is all testing so that the final one will come out perfect. Back around to the beginning. Keep your knife level. Mm -hmm. All the way through. Clean off your cake cake wheel so you don't have as much crumbs. We're going to do a real thin layer here. Probably could have added a tiny bit of water or milk or cream to thin out the buttercream a little bit. It's a little thick. Okay, got to get our jam out of the refrigerator. And we didn't get too jelly-y. It does feel a little bit warm still. Not warm, but not chilled too much. Now hopefully this doesn't run all into the cake and not stay as a layer. It is a very holy cake. Two and a half spoons. We let it set all the way. Now like I said in the first video, you don't the wall to be too much higher than your jam layer. We're going to squeeze a little bit of that out. We're going to be base frosting it with this anyways. So you want it at the same level as your jam. Hopefully this is good. Make sure you're straight in there. And repeat the process. So when I go to make the final one, I might put some gelatin in it. We'll see how this holds up once we slice into it. Make sure you're staying level. Let me turn this guy a little. There, that's more level. If you don't cut your cakes exactly level. When you go to put them together, they might not match up right. It might not be level. So you want to make sure you check that. 
So it was enough for four of these spoons per layer, which is good. So that should be enough jam, unless I want to fill it with more next time. See how it looks when we cut it. Looks good. Now we got a base frost it. I'm just gonna put all of this on top and work it down the sides. And we're gonna cover this layer in the red fondant we made in part one. The problem with having a thick buttercream is you're moving your cake layers around, trying to get it to spread out. Don't want that. You don't wanna squish your cake down too much. Thin layer on top. A little bit more out of our, oop, out of our frosting bag. We still got a little bit in here. Okay. This cake is base frosted. Now soon we're gonna be moving on to fondant, which I have not done much of. I know the principle and how to do it. I did not do much. So this is gonna be a learning experience for both of us. I'm not gonna make a third layer on my wedding cake because literally we are combining the first layer and second layer together to make a third layer. So it's gonna be the, pretty much the same stuff. The only difference is it's gonna be a six inch cake on top and I do not have the pans right now to make six inch cakes. I am just going to do vanilla cake because lemon and peanut butter kind of sounds weird together but other than that it's going to be a chocolate peanut butter cake and a vanilla cake with raspberry and peanut butter fillings. We'll see you in part three to cover, stack, and decorate my trial wedding cake. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned some things. Was happy to share my keto fondant and gum paste recipe with you guys. Don't forget to check out the blog links and my Amazon links in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.